Hi, how are you? I'm great, uh, Kirill. How are you? I'm great. Okay, uh, let me switch to my headphones. Sure. Yeah, firstly, thank you uh, for, for coming to my show. Yeah, sure. So I thought to tell about uh, your work uh, to my audience. Sorry? Uh, I thought to tell about uh, your work to my audience. Sorry, I have problems with the sound. Could you repeat? Once again. Uh, I, I thought to tell about your work to my audience. I have gone through your profile. Yeah, great. Yeah, so can you please introduce yourself to my audience? Uh, yeah, I uh, work at uh, Chainstack. Uh, Chainstack is a Web3 infrastructure company. Uh, I work as a product manager. I have a few projects, uh, products, uh, uh, and basically, uh, the company company's core business is providing uh, customers with blockchain nodes, uh, and uh, the developers of Web3 applications uh, uh, usually don't want to run their own nodes to access the blockchain uh, because there's a lot of uh, stuff to do, uh, DevOps. Uh, uh, and uh, maintenance of uh, servers and so on, and uh, uh, they tend to just get the uh, API endpoint uh, for a shared node, and it's cheap or even free, uh, and then they can uh, write only their code on their uh, laptop and uh, deploy their smart contracts on the blockchain without all this infrastructure stuff. Uh, and uh, in this company, I'm uh, working on the uh, data products, data APIs, uh, and data indexing products uh, to help developers uh, to access the blockchain data uh, easily without um, indexing uh, uh, on their side, uh, just writing simple um, indexers, uh, deploying them also into our platform and uh, having the uh, ready-to-use data uh, via API. You're from? You're Sorry? from? You're from? Uh, I, I'm from uh, Russia uh, and now I live in Georgia for like a few years. Uh, and I'm basically nomading and uh, uh, currently choosing a country to move to another one. So as a project manager, uh, can you uh, tell us uh, more about your work? Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, the main thing uh, in the product manager, the product management is uh, to um, to run the business. Uh, so if uh, there is a product, there is a development, and uh, it can look uh, like uh, beautiful and uh, um, cool, but if there is no business around it. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, like there is no um, uh, like there is no idea to, to do uh, work uh, to do the work in this uh, uh, area. So we are what we are trying to do is to um, uh, access uh, to uh, to reach out to our customers to. Um, speak with them to figure out their pain uh, regarding their um, here it's a development process uh, and uh, to try to help the solutions so that can uh, help them to have uh, uh, like to focus on their own uh, main uh, business and not uh, thinking about uh, uh, the stuff they don't want to think about uh, here uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, conversations with the Web3 developers, uh, and uh, basically uh, they have, uh, 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 in my opinion, they have much more uh, problems uh, compared uh, with the uh, Web2 developers because uh, all these uh, uh, stuff that they use, uh, the tools, uh, the software, uh, 
uh, is not really uh, reliable or um, like advanced level or uh, just convenient to use uh, uh, because all this area is not uh, so um, so developed uh, so uh, e every year we have a new framework and uh, new technologies and uh, uh, I think the uh, developer experience is uh, pretty poor in this area so we have uh, really a lot of uh, ideas how to help developers. We are uh, showing them uh, these ideas. We are trying to um, help them in some ways and uh, uh, sharing some MVPs, uh, collecting the feedback and trying to implement this uh, feedback in our core product and our new products uh, and so on. Basically, this is my job. So what what product uh, what products you are working right now? Uh, recently, we we released the first version of uh, my product, uh, which is called uh, Subgraphs. Uh, Subgraphs is um, the um, uh, I I'd start with um, something uh, how we um, came up with this product. Uh, as you may know, in uh, the blockchains, uh, the data is stored uh, uh, in transactions uh, and uh, it's not uh, like the SQL database when you can uh, write a query uh, which will extract all the data you need in like in a flash. Uh, here you have uh, a big uh, uh, database without any indexing and the database can, can like have uh, the volume about several terabytes, and uh, there are uh, like uh, thousands of developers who are using uh, the same uh, ledger uh, along with you, and uh, all of them are deploying their uh, their smart contracts. Uh, the users uh, send transactions, and uh, this is a complete mess. And uh, to get access to your personal data, your the data of your smart contract, uh, you have to uh, write uh, the uh, code which will go over the entire blockchain and will find all only your transactions, store it somewhere. Uh, you have to keep it up to date. You have to process the chain reorganizations uh, uh, and. Uh, uh, it's even if you will write uh, this code and uh, uh, run it somewhere, you have to uh, wait for a long uh, time while it's uh, going over the uh, entire blockchain. And um, to basically to solve this problem, uh, there is a, a project called uh, the Graph, um, and uh, uh, the Graph has uh, a mission like to um, uh, help any anyone uh, access the blockchain data easily, and um, in uh, inside of this project uh, there is a decentralized network which is being uh, developed, uh, uh, which uh, allow users to access the data paying tokens for uh, each request. But also there is a technology to index the blockchain data, which is uh, free to use. Uh, which is open sourced and everybody can run their own uh, indexer and write uh, their own code will, which uh, uh, is much easier to write uh, um, compared to with the way when you don't have this framework. Uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, the technology is uh, um, pretty good, but uh, the infrastructure side of uh, uh, this case uh, is not uh, really easy for to manage. Uh, if you are uh, like a Web3 developer who are focused mostly on writing smart contracts uh, or on um, uh, front end for your decentralized application, you need to just run this graph uh, node. Uh, it's uh, it can be like uh, the same level of complexity task uh, compared to your just your smart contract development and uh, it would be just cool to uh, write 
this uh, indexer and deploy it somewhere in some infrastructure and don't think about uh, how to spin up these uh, nodes, how to connect them to each other, how to monitor their health uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, what we did is uh, we uh, run it on our site, we integrated it into our platform, uh, we made a lot of monitoring uh, and alerting around it, and there is a uh, operations team who is um, watching uh, and overseeing this uh, product. Uh, uh, and uh, the developer can, uh, in this case, they can only write their own subgraph uh, and deploy it in, into chain stack and just have the data all already indexed and ready to use via API. Uh, and uh, in, in this way, it becomes pretty convenient to have all your data of your smart contract uh, in an API and you just write your front end application, which will have all this data via this API, not thinking about how is it stored, how it's stored uh, on the blockchain. So as a product manager you know, uh, for a business and helping uh, different businesses which belongs to different industries, uh, which businesses are getting more benefit with this uh, technology that you're uh, working on? Uh, uh, I think uh, along with the uh, our core product, uh, which is blockchain nodes, uh, the main customers who are uh, paying for this particular product or for the nodes are um, dev developers who are in uh, uh, maybe uh, some well-known uh, decentralized applications uh, like uh, SushiSwap, Uniswap, OneInch, uh, and so on. Uh, wallets uh, developers uh, like uh, Brave, uh, Timeless Wallet, and so on. So there, there are uh, a lot of customers from this industry, and basically, uh, if uh, you um, write a smart contract, you will need Node. If you are writing uh, the uh, any um, analytical application or uh, your portfolio tracker uh, for crypto, you will need uh, also nodes. And um, all of these uh, developers uh, are using RPC endpoints uh, in different ways, uh, and there are different providers on this area. So uh, basically, these are our target audience. So how many customers do you have? Uh, we have uh, more than uh, hundreds of thousands of registered accounts, and uh, uh, I guess uh, re regarding active accounts, there are more than uh, 10 or 20 thousands. Uh, most of them, are, of course, uh, on the free developer plan because it's pretty attractive. You can uh, just log in uh, and have access to 3 million of requests uh, to uh, the blockchain nodes, to any blockchain. We support more than 20 blockchains and uh, you can just use it for free uh, in this freemium model. Uh, but uh, some of the users uh, who need uh, more requests per uh, months, for instance, if there are uh, famous applications uh, uh, like, for instance, CoinGecko is our one of the most, uh, one of the biggest customers. Uh, they have uh, really uh, much more than three million of requests per month, so they have to uh, buy some subscription plan, uh, get more features uh, like. Uh, uh, debug trace interface or some other um, stuff that's not available on the free plans. Uh, but yes, there are different customers. So uh, uh, right now you are working on different features uh, by taking the feedback uh, from your customers. So what kind of feedback that you got and uh, what are the improvements that you're doing? <clears throat> Uh, in our process, uh, first we are trying to uh, deliver uh, really um, a raw uh, MVP of the product, uh, 
Uh, in this case, it was the um, uh, really few uh, buttons when you just can create subgraph, click on deploy, and uh, that's it. And then when we uh, like collected uh, several customers who uh, started using uh, the product, we uh, we uh, found out that uh, there are that there are a lot of uh, uh, things uh, we have to do because um, it's uh, uh, like it's impossible to use uh, the product in real production because there are. Uh, some uh, not only bugs uh, but uh, also uh, some uh, misleading uh, things or uh, in the UI or in the back end and uh, uh, I can uh, give some examples like uh, uh, first we figured out that uh, the speed of syncing of uh, like of indexing is not uh, really good compared even to some free uh, applications and uh, we did a lot of uh, research uh, figuring out what is uh, the bottleneck uh, and um, like when we found out we did some tweaks and it started working like I don't know 100% uh, uh, faster uh, 100 times or faster than before uh, then uh, we had um, uh, we had a lot of work done uh, regarding the, regarding uh, supporting of new protocols uh, firstly we uh, supported on the uh, ethereum polygon and bsc then we added uh, arbitrum optimism we added test nets we didn't know that uh, users are heavily using test nets uh, especially for subgraph development um, then now we are working on the UI features that help users to um, see the performance of their subgraphs and uh, figuring out what are the bottlenecks in their own code and uh, to how to help, how to make uh, this code work faster. Yep, that's it. So mainly the technology blockchain is the poor thing uh in your business uh, that you are helping with uh, uh, helping uh, uh, for other businesses. So uh, how other businesses are using this efficiently in order to run their businesses and how they are solving their problems with this? Uh, I say um, I would separate uh, two, um, two types of uh, uh, I'd say view on uh, this technology. First is uh, there are some uh, technological enthusiasts uh, who are trying to build something new that uh, never existed. And uh, uh, when they uh, do something and they show it to uh, the people, uh, most uh, people can say that uh, uh, nobody needs it, uh, nobody will use it. Uh, but uh, accidentally, uh, there are some people who would like to try, who see the advantages uh, of these new technologies uh, for them, and they're uh, occurring some uh, some process that uh, make uh, these people to like uh, speak with each other, like telling how cool is that, how can they uh, leverage uh, this technology and uh, they are true uh, uh, how to say uh, uh, they are believers and uh, uh, they they are like they don't wonder about uh, uh, actually business advantages and so on they just uh, want to try something new uh, they see something cool here and uh, they even pay for it some like price. Uh, for instance, uh, if you uh, use uh, crypto for uh, paying for, I don't know, to, to send, uh, for instance, uh, money to your 
uh, family or uh, friends uh, to another country when you have some problems with uh, your with uh, the banking system with inter international banking banking system which is not uh, really um, good uh, in some countries and uh, now you just uh, leverage uh, this technology you uh, like you, you don't think about businesses uh, how they can leverage uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, startups which are working on new technologies which don't have uh, actual uh, uh, applications uh, right now, so they are just developing. And they need uh, uh, the product that we are selling uh, just to move faster in their development, uh, to uh, not uh, spend their time, which is... Uh, uh, always not enough to do all that they want uh, in their development. Uh, and there is another part of uh, uh, all of potential users. Uh, for instance, uh, Web2 uh, companies which would like to leverage blockchains for something that uh, um, actually doesn't exist as an application also. Uh, and there are some uh, big enterprises that uh, are thinking how they can use this technology in some supply chains or um, like uh, CDBC uh, um, and so on. And uh, uh, I'm not sure that um, we are um, uh, good at the second uh, part of this uh, market and I don't think that our our direct competitors are also good at it because uh, these uh, mostly uh, these uh, type of customers uh, uh, finally don't uh, um, don't find the real advantages so they spend a lot of money to do some proof of concept and uh, then like years are passing and there is no uh, uh, no revenue and so on. And uh, I think uh, like uh, I, I don't see uh, the real applications uh, from like uh, uh, top down from big uh, enterprises uh, uh, so far. But maybe it will change in the future. And I also I see uh, really a lot of uh, Startups uh, uh, which are getting some funds, which are getting traction from their users, from their community, uh, who are uh, some of them are growing, some of them are just uh, uh, emerging, some of them are dying because they are like startups, uh, startup uh, environment. Uh, but and also uh, everybody is uh, telling about uh, crypto winter like uh, there are a lot of startups uh, uh, died but uh, also uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, I'd say now companies uh, and pretty big companies uh, uh, from the uh, uh, true crypto space who develop their uh, decentralized exchange uh, decentralized like liquid staking uh, and so on, they uh, feel pretty fine uh, even now uh, because they have customers and customers uh, use uh, their product uh, really heavily and they love this product and they don't want to use something like centralized and uh, that's why they um, will, um, um, will retain with them and um, they have a future basically. Mm -hmm. So, which business? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this. Uh, which business will get uh, more benefit, or uh, uh, or uh, for which business uh, this product is most useful? You think? Uh, I think uh, uh, just uh, examples: uh, decentralized exchange, uh, liquid staking, uh, any uh, lending, borrowing uh, applications. Uh, uh, bridges, um, any application which is working with uh, chain on chain data, and uh, they can leverage this technology. They also do uh, already do, but uh, mm, as I uh, as I uh, described before, there is uh, a technology uh, developed by the graph, and it's pretty popular and well-known and we are just 
making this uh, convenient, uh, more convenient to use. Uh, but basically in this space, uh, all top uh, players are using this in any, in some ways. Uh, so like uh, decentralized exchange, liquid staking, uh, lending and so on applications. So how is your experience as a, a product manager? Uh, I really like this job and uh, being a product manager, uh, I think uh, I have a strong technical background, uh, but I always uh, tend to uh, move uh, closer to the business and uh, uh, in this uh, position, uh, I feel that uh, it's really uh, great to see how I can participate uh, both in development in and in the uh, uh, in sales and in uh, product development. Uh, so it's great because it's like on the intersection of all this stuff that I like. So you are being the mediator between uh, the customers and developers. Yeah, that's a great description. So uh, how you are able to uh, uh, take the input from the customers and uh, create something that is useful for the customers by telling to the developers? Uh, sometimes uh, it's not easy uh, because uh, the developers and the customers speak in different languages. Uh, uh, so uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, to show the cases of uh, customers to the developers because on like on the examples uh, it's pretty easy to understand the problem. Uh, I'd say that uh, when developers have have their view on the uh, situation and their uh, priorities in their like head uh, and just to show that uh, in the case of the real customer who exists who just uh, uh, talk to me uh, and they have a problem that is out of scope of priorities of the developers really change the uh, the situation and uh, they want like in the, this case uh, they can change their mind can focus on something uh, really important uh, i say this is the main uh, idea for a leverage so what kind of research or what kind of study you do in order to be a good product uh, manager in your present role uh, you mean uh, education or? Uh, yeah, or it, mean, can be, uh, it can be. It can be from. It can be from any other resources that you collect the information to improve the uh, improve yourself uh, or uh, for the product that you are working or uh, or uh, you are doing some research work, uh, uh, meeting some people or talking with some other people from whom you can uh, get information in order to uh, uh, be more productive in your role. Um, I read uh, a lot of uh, books uh, uh, regarding uh, not only product management, but uh, startups uh, and uh, business. And uh, uh, I'd say that uh, after that, uh, uh, after reading and learning, uh, you see uh, the main patterns that you need to do like something because uh, there are the rules, like you have to speak with the customers, like it's uh, uh, it's like a rule. Uh, you have to collect the feedback, you have to uh, like write user stories and so on. Uh, but uh, after some period of time, uh, after the uh, years of real work, uh, uh, you starting uh, figuring out the difference when the people just following these patterns and they look uh, uh, like uh, they do everything right, but uh, the results can be not really good, uh, not uh, like 
uh, and to uh, to to notice this uh, difference, uh, you need to do a lot of work by your hands and uh, uh, not only speaking with customers but uh, diving into the uh, technologies and uh, trying everything by by your own and uh, uh, like doing a lot of uh, homework uh, to um, to be on the level to understand what you actually need to do now uh, what do you have to focus on um, and sometimes to um, not do that looks good looks how to how you should do like uh, but uh, like stop with it and to start focusing on something that uh, other people uh, just don't notice and uh, sometimes I, I mean for instance uh, at one point uh, at some point I figured out that uh, we got stuck with the development because uh, Everybody is uh, everybody is losing uh, the focus and trying to do um, finish all the tasks they they work, they have and uh, the backlog is like super big and I see that the core uh, product is not uh, moving forward and uh, I like I I did a lot of uh, work and uh, efforts. Uh, to um, to um, make people understand what what the problem is, and I I don't think that it's a, a great uh, like product development uh, um, uh, pro- product development uh, feature, uh, but it's uh, um, if, but finally that uh, for instance I can change my focus on this part and to execute this uh, the solution uh, finally it move the product uh, much further and uh, much faster than before uh, and to the actual users to start selling it so in my opinion if we are just like Focusing on the product stuff uh, for the product manager, we miss uh, that uh, there are a lot of things that are not written in the books, and uh, you, know, you learn only learning by doing. And then, like doing after doing a lot of stuff, you know what to do. How much experience you have as a product manager? Uh, I think five years total. And before that, I worked uh, mostly in AI uh, field and uh, also as a product manager and also um, in the middle of uh, development uh, team and uh, uh, customer. Uh, and uh, but. Uh, there was a big corporation and uh, it was not uh, a startup and uh, mm, having a pretty um, similar um, work, it, it, the focus points were really different. Like there just to, uh, to make this big uh, corporation move in the direction what you need uh, for your product uh, you need to put a lot of efforts much more than just to uh, to speak with customers to figure out the needs because you can know everything about the customers but the main problem will be how to execute it actually and in startups uh, it's much much easier because like nobody will say like don't do this, don't do that, uh, you can't do this. You just go in to like do it. You can communicate with anybody in the uh, company easily. Uh, just to uh, agree to do something. Uh, and in big corporations, it's uh, it's really different. Just to um, communicate, just to agree 
on something and uh, it's hard, but then to execute on this something that you agreed on, it's uh, another problem. Uh, but uh, yeah, everything was like product management, called product management. So uh, from last five years as uh, a product manager, uh, taking the feedbacks and knowing uh, how to build uh, different products, uh, you're observing also the market, the industry, uh, the change that is, the constant change that is happening in the industry. So as a product manager, how you update yourself in order to match the requirements of the market? I'm trying to uh, to uh, remind uh, the. Uh, in my opinion, when we uh, when work uh, on the product and trying to um, to to consider the market uh, change uh, on your work, it's. Uh, uh, I don't think it's really what you need to do. Uh, right after you uh, like started working on the product, you are trying to focus not on the big market, but on the small case of your of particular user and to try to see the patterns that uh, are uh, repeating uh, on, on from on different customers' uh, use cases. And uh, you can make uh, sometimes uh, it's hard but uh, uh, basically if there is a niche and uh, uh, there are the customers that uh, you can uh, uh, reach uh, you can make uh, the product grow anyway uh, and also yes uh, if uh, there is a growing market it's much easier but um, I'd say uh, like the observing uh, how the, the big market is growing uh, or uh, decreasing you can't just uh, frustrate that uh, you your results are um, not uh, uh, like uh, the same that you're expected from this big market change uh, i think that uh, it's better to focus on your work and uh, to uh, do at least small improvements uh, uh, like every day uh, than just uh, uh, trying to notice the big change on the market. Uh, I think it's better. So uh, the products that you worked for uh, are big scale products. Uh, from previous shopping in our... Yeah, all the five years of uh, jobs? Uh, before that, I worked uh, on mostly internal products uh, on the big corporation, but uh, it was internal products that help uh, the uh, um, bank officers uh, to uh, process the uh, documents from the customers faster. And uh, like that, uh, there was uh, software for uh, the uh, for these officers, uh, which uh, read the uh, documentation, and uh, it uh, utilized the computer vision, um, natural language processing to extract the data, and uh, only to show the uh, uh, user. Uh, the results of the work and uh, offer to just uh, click uh, the button uh, like accept or decline. Uh, that was one product. Uh, before that, we worked on the uh, recommendation uh, system for sales and uh, uh, like uh, there is a there was a big uh, database with. Uh, uh, contacts and uh, with features of uh, these com customers and uh, we were developing uh, machine learning algorithm to uh, 
um, to make a rating for one like daily basis, uh, who should they speak to, uh, to, uh, increase the, uh, the probability of success. Uh, and, uh, before that I worked on the, uh, also machine learning algorithms, uh, computer vision, uh, which uh, were, uh, recognizing the patterns on like fiber optic uh, signals and so on to control the, um, borders of uh, some, uh, territories. That's it. So how many uh, technology tools you know? Mm, like what technology tools? Uh, to build a, a product. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, it's easy to say like how many because uh, uh, if you <laughs> ask for instance, uh, how many uh, like uh, Programming languages uh, we used, uh, it will be uh, the, uh, I, I, can, I can tell a number, but uh, the tool is a T white uh, uh, description for me. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so the, the product that you're working right now, uh, what you're using uh, to build it? Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> we use, uh, uh, some products of, from JetBrains, uh, software, uh, for software development, uh, uh, like PyCharm and so on. Uh, we use also, uh, Utrek, uh, Utrek from this company to track tasks, uh, GitHub, um, Linux, uh, like bash scripts. Uh, sometimes there, there are really uh, heavy te technical, uh, stuff, uh, but it's uh, much faster to do something by your own, not waiting for somebody will help. So I'd say that, uh, my tools are pretty similar to tools of the developers who are working on uh, the actual development of uh, technical part of the product. So the product that you're working right now, uh, uh, what kind of uh, feedback that you are listening from your customers? Mm, it looks like uh, we um, can ask uh, like if he, like I'd say uh, sometimes they just come over and say that uh, uh, the nodes are lagging or the nodes are not performing. And then we are trying to figure out how their use case uh, uh, facing uh, real infrastructure can uh, not having like all advantages of this infrastructure. And then um, so we can understand what the um, circumstances or what uh, the environment uh, they use uh, then uh, sp like speaking with developers trying to figure out how uh, it affects uh, how this uh, affect their user experience um, and uh, this is uh, like pretty heavy technical stuff like uh, regarding uh, like infrastructure uh, parameters of this. Mm, I like that. So how will be that talk with the developers? How do you talk and uh, how it will be? How I talk to developers? Yeah, how it will be uh, regarding the product? Um, I think uh, we speak on the same language. Uh, like, if I, I understand uh, pretty good uh, what they do. They understand what I do, and there is no like barriers or some specific methods to understand each other. I think. So everything that customer says uh, can be translated and uh, given in their technology product. Yes. I, yeah. I think. It, pretty transparent we do it this way so everything is possible with technology
Uh, <laughs> hard question. I don't know. <laughs> Because you hear so many uh, responses from so many people. Sorry, uh, the beginning of the phrase. So you you listen so many responses. You take a lot of feedback uh, from different people in order to improve the product or the service. So uh, you listen what they say. So do you listen something that you won't expect? I'm trying to be open to any opinion. Sometimes uh, uh, we, yeah, so, sometimes there there can be situations when uh, I disagree with uh, the customers, like uh, when I think that uh, like the case uh, that like they they use the tool wrong way uh, and. Uh, This can be challenging to um, to agree on something, uh, but mostly like uh, the people that use our products are pretty uh, smart and it's easy to uh, to get the feedback and to try to help uh, them. There's no problem in the process. So. At last, uh, what do you say about uh, uh, your work to my audience? Mm, I like what? <laughs> uh, about uh, like how you are enjoying about uh, uh, product management and uh, how it is and uh, how how it is how it is in the market. Oh, uh, I think. Uh, Like uh, uh, anyway, uh, I, I like uh, my job, uh, and uh, I can recommend you like uh, try uh, your stuff in this uh, uh, field. And I think that uh, uh, on the market uh, there is impossible that uh, there will be no demand on product managers because uh, uh, anyway, uh, like business works, uh, we are products and sales uh, and. Uh, somebody have to understand what uh, we really need to do, what to develop, and how to uh, how to like sell it, uh, basically. And uh, I see this uh, position is uh, as it's like uh, somebody says, like uh, it's uh, um, CEO of like product of uh, like uh, some part of the company, and uh, it's. Uh, Uh, pretty inspiring uh, and exciting uh, uh, to work uh, like on this job. And what do you say about my questioning in this conversation? What? Sorry. My my questioning in this conversation. What is your observation about my questions? Your questions. Uh, it, it was uh, pretty interesting to discuss it from different sides. Uh, That was great question. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, what is your observation about my work? Have you seen any videos of mine on YouTube? Uh, I'd say uh, we we were speaking all, uh, almost an hour. Uh, maybe uh, like uh, shorter uh, is better because uh, I think that uh, like. Uh, It's cool to you touch uh, like the main things uh, in short period of time because like this, uh, sometimes uh, you have uh, I don't know 20 minutes uh, just when you are getting to work and you can listen to the podcast and then you just uh, forget to continue and so on. So I'd say that it can be just uh, shorter and that's it. But everything was great. Yeah, but. Uh... uh like you know i i take interviews uh, of all countries like people from all countries more than 100 country experts i interview and uh, to present a, i will present uh, a, an individual or a professional only for once in my channel so i want to tell exactly what that person is doing like uh, uh, in whole 
i i can't uh, do justice uh, for that person just by talking five or 10 minutes i cannot uh, cover his job <laughs> in five ten minutes yeah, even one sure. hour one hour is very uh, less because you have five years of uh, product uh, uh, management experience in one hour it is impossible for me to like ask many questions yes yeah i agree sure sure but there is a tiktok uh, which is uh, like uh, Uh, winning the world uh, and uh, everybody's uh, uh, looking at uh, several seconds uh, videos <laughs> having fun but i more concentrate on in- information rather than famous uh, if yeah, uh, if great. my the the duration of uh, listening or watching on my channel is more people are sitting and watching and listening to my podcast and taking time my uh, the, i i have increased that value and also um, my area is very big like um, my my area uh, uh, my audience are from different parts of the world not just india or us or canada or uk europe i have everywhere so even if 100 people from that country 100 people from that country can able to uh, get whatever you said now it is a very big number so i am not targeting my, my my target audience is very big it's a global thing so it is okay to have a big discussion if i was uh, targeting a one country or one locality uh, this this because the 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 number of people will be very less the population of that particular place will be less so i have to com- compulsorily impress them in order to uh, create something uh, what they like so if if you can see uh, the more number of people you are targeting uh, it is okay even if you get 10 or 100 or 1000 from that country or 1000 from this country 1000 from uh, you know if you combine it the number becomes big and that number doubles yeah. when it, when the information is good eventually i'll concentrate on the value of the uh, uh, information that i'm sharing everybody wants the information rather than Uh, 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 rather than just uh, 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 spending time for five minutes, they want to learn. Actually, I'm sure uh, uh, your words will change at least hundred to two hundred people from anywhere in the world. I believe so. Yeah, great, great vision. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah. uh, I want uh, your feedback uh, for for the last time. So me, uh, I have done masters in software engineering. and bachelor's in computer science and engineering right now i'm uh, uh, working for some uh, uk uh, uh, uk uh, company as a devops cloud devops engineer and software developer so apart that is my full time job apart from that uh, i'm taking uh, interviews of experts like you who are already in the industry who are working on different products and services and who belongs to different parts of the world and uh, who works in microsoft uh google amazon facebook netflix um uh also people who belong to different industries like police officers authors uh uh psychologists doctors uh like uh, uh trying to uh uh, uh communicate with uh, different uh, mindsets and who belongs to different uh, uh industries and different companies and different countries different cultures who are coming from different cultures different backgrounds so me having these kind of conversations because you listen to a lot of customers in order to improve into the into the product that you are working on so you know the value of the feedback uh, how that can be helpful in order to uh, create a uh, great product uh, which helps or solves many problems so me trying to have this diversity in my project uh uh this is my personal project that i do so also i interviewed people from nasa who works on space industry space technology uh in order to understand how the information transfer is happening between uh uh, uh the satellites and uh, and the uh and the people who are living on the land so what technologies they are using how things works in order to uh Uh, 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 for communication purpose so this kind of diversity uh, 
and uh, collecting information from different parts of the world and uh, understanding how they are solving problems in different places how this experience is going to helpful for me in coming days in my technical career great sounds great uh, how doing, uh, great job how it is going to be helpful yeah i think it's super helpful uh, because uh, really uh, to see different people from different uh, areas uh, speaking about their work it's really really cool really helpful so uh, can you share your social media presence to my audience so that they can learn from you they can follow you uh y- yes uh, uh, you mean how uh, for instance can you spell it your twitter or if you have a website ah, i have a twitter but you, you can share the link uh, on the yeah. youtube uh, i'll put it yeah. but uh, for podcast listeners can you spell it uh balakhonov uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a nickname on twitter sure So can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Uh sure. Also can I put this audio and video clip on my podcast, website, internet, social media everywhere with your permission? Uh, yes, yes, sure, sure. So I'm sure uh, uh your your uh, uh uh valuable experience or the answers that you have given, the information that you have shared if it helps at least one person in uh, developing his career in product development you will be the reason for their uh, growth and you will be the reason for their uh, development that will be great thank you again uh, kiril for your valuable time on my show yeah no worries my pleasure thank you for your time yeah take care bye yeah bye